bottom up in organizing or starting a newsletter. How many of you who are present here that are in charge of your newsletter? Okay. Newsletter. Okay. How many are planning among you to start a newsletter for your province? Okay. So we have some. So basically, when we talk about the print media, we are also going to talk about something practical by asking ourselves, how are we going to start a newsletter? And by that, sharing all the possibilities and the instances of sharing a newsletter, I will be more into sharing also the experience that we have in our newsletter, Arnoldo Snoda, which is the official newsletter of the Society of the Divine Word. And also part of a newsletter, we cannot come up with any newsletter unless we have something to present in the newsletter. So we need to write, we need to edit any information that we receive. So we are also going to discuss, basically lightly, because of time constraints, the art of writing, some basic journalism techniques and tips. So why do we ask the importance of print media where we still see a lot of printed materials all over? Or basically, we are asking the importance of print media because now we are using a different background. Because when we ask the importance of print media, we are basically situating the print media in the electronic AIDS or in the digital AIDS. That is why we ask, well, electronic media is so strong. It's eating us up. The social media, people no longer read. They just, you know, even their attention is so limited. And the question is, in this digital age or in this time of social media, can we still talk about print media? Are they authentic? Are they necessary? So I think it's very important that as we go on with our discussion, since we are focusing on the print media, we need to have some kind of a working definition, some kind of a platform that we all understand what is print media. So when we talk of print media, we describe as the means of mass communication that is used to disseminate messages to the general public by way of printed publications, for example, newspapers, journals, magazines, books, and so on. So we have our favorite newspapers. We read books. I grew up admiring an elder sister. Her room is full of books, and I remember she had a favorite author, and maybe you know her, you know this author, Daniel Steele. All about love stories. <laughs> that is why my sister married so early. Now, I think for us to understand the importance of the print media and the revolution it has created, maybe we need to take a look back. Before the dawning of the print media wherein people would have access to books that are printed, what was the experience? Prior to the invention of the Gutenberg Press, Books were hand copied by scribes. You know about those old movies showing the church, and we have those monks sitting in chairs copying things, copying books, because there were no presses at the time. And because of this, texts were rare and very costly. So only people who are moneyed could afford. So during that time, only the rich people would ask the monks to copy something for them, but they would pay a hefty sum to have 
that kind of books. China and Japan had forms of printing presses for thousands of years. But they could not get out because of the closed-door policy. They could not have much influence because they were using characters that were so strange for the rest of the world. So, there was this big revolution, the invention of the Gutenberg Press. And out of this came about what we call the information age of the 15th century. Why? Because of the Gutenberg Press, copying manuscripts or materials was set aside. It became a lot easier to have books because now, because of the first Gutenberg Press, they were capable of printing 42 line pages, making it possible to turn out hundreds of copies. So what do you think? When there are many books that are copied or printed, then there are many available books and more demands, and because of more books that are printed, it becomes cheaper than people can afford. Now, the end result of this was the increased availability of print, literary rates, literacy rates through Western civilization soared. Why? Because there were people seeing others reading and smiling these books that they were reading for entertainment. And those who are illiterate say, oh, I would like to have the same experience. I would like to read. And they would say, please teach me to read. And so there was this interest to learn how to read. So literacy soared and print became the primary way for delivering messages to the masses. Now, we say print media is a mass media. Delivering messages, printing books for the masses. But we are all aware that there is a limitation because the printed books are only limited to people who can, who can read, who can read. So what happened was this age of the printing press has created some kind of exclusivity. They were only exclusive to the people who are able to read. And because of that, people who were feeling out of the loop, People who are feeling out of that level of people having this possibility to read, encourage them, inspire them also to learn how to read. The machinery and process of printing were perfected over the following four centuries. Possibly, Father Jurgen must have shown to you some photos about the printing press that our father Arnold Johnson had, the printing press, the big rooms wherein a lot of brothers were working to create all these mission books and were sent to the missions. But the print media and publications evolved, and they became more important to spread information, and more newspapers, more magazines, and there were more publications of books. Now, you think print media captured all this moment? You think print media basked in glory for all these years? No. There was a threat. There was a competition and the competition was the dawn, not of Aquarius, but the dawn of the electronic media. 
In the early decades of the 20th century, the first major non-print form of mass media exploded in popularity, radio. What's the difference? Do you need to be literate to hear the radio? The only thing you need are your ears. So what happens is that people were so happy and they love it. They didn't have to be literate to be able to listen to the news, to the music. And the worst of it all was that the radio was also delivering the news. So what was the problem? Hey, the newspapers! They have to wait the next day to print a news while something was happening the same day and the people who doesn't even read would be able to hear what was happening at that very moment. The print media didn't want that. They didn't want to just to be put aside. So they complained to the different news agencies and they said to them, hey, don't give them those news. We should be the exclusive ones and the people should wait when our newspaper comes out to be able to learn and to read what was happening. But of course, they could not push with that. Now, the print media and the electronic media fulfill several roles in society, entertaining, providing an outlet for imagination, educating, informing, serving as public forum for the discussion of issues, acting as watchdog for government, business, and other institutions. It had come a long way and the electronic media and the print media could not avoid it. They have to go side by side. So, it was not only radio that came out. There were more things that followed. Hey, welcome electronic media. Cinema came out, television, internet, computer. How can print media compete with all of this? So the question is, why would print media competing with this giant who keeps on improving and improving? What is it in that print media that is, is still going on today? So, the primary sources, going back again to the electronic media, are audiovisual recordings, multimedia. You can see how things have developed. Remember when we were all fascinated with slides, you know, missionaries would come. They have slides showing the missions. Now we rarely see those slides, you know. So what happens is print media, you, can, you don't see much improvement while electronic media keeps on evolving and evolving and getting better and better. And I'm sure in the next talks that you will be offered, you will learn more about the digital media and the effect it has on each of us. The medium of the electronic media, television, radio, who used to have a Walkman, you know, carrying that big thing, you know, and that was the in thing. Who used to have Betamax? Huh? So, uh, they still have here. So, we can see and we have experienced that as we go on in our years, we also have evolved and we have acquired things that responded more to our needs. Now, may I have the right to say print media versus electronic media? Is the competition fair? 
Let's see. Okay. As I have mentioned earlier, in terms of literacy, print media, to be able to experience it, you should be literate to read the information that it provides. Electronic media, literacy is not the primary requirement. As long as you have the time and the interest, you can sit down and watch movies again and again, or you can sit down and read your favorite books. Point of comparison, deadline. Deadline exists in relation to the collection of news. Okay? So the Washington Post now have their things ready, almost ready for the next day. Right? And there is a deadline. Up to this time, they can receive news, but it has to go to printing. And that's it. What happens if, at that printing time, something big happens? Who has the ads? Who has the ads? The print media or the electronic media? Because in electronic media, there is no such deadline and news can be updated anytime. Live discussion. In print media, no such thing as live discussion and inter-exchange of opinions. You read, that's it. Unless you want to call the newspaper <laughs> and say your ideas. But electronic media, it's possible. Who has Facebook? So, are you only a Facebook user that watches or sees what is happening? Or are you an active Facebook user wherein you write your thoughts or sometimes gives your opinions? Now, that is an example that electronic media offers us. We have become politicians. We have become opinionated. We have started criticizing. And unfortunately, people express their opinions better and they feel stronger using the media than by telling a person directly, right? Coverage. Of course, print media is comparatively less. Why? Because there's a deadline. As soon as the deadline comes, the piece of news stops. But in electronic media, if something comes up with that particular news that happened, electronic media can come in and update that news. They are the only ones, or TV news can use the term breaking news. Have you ever seen a newspaper breaking news? <laughs> There's no breaking. It's already printed. It doesn't change. It remains as is. Print media. Periodical. Every month, like, for example, the National Geographic or your favorite magazine or maybe the newspaper every day. But in electronic media, it is frequent. It is continued. While following the elections in the United States, every probably five minutes, Things are changing. Things are happening. They would say, okay, in Minnesota, Trump is winning. In Chicago, Hillary Clinton is winning. So you can follow. It keeps on going and going. You look at the newspaper. Nothing. It's the same thing. What comes out that was printed, it remains the same. Now, because of this, because of this, what happens is, 
electronic media is fast gaining over the conventional print media. And I understand. And we have seen only some basic comparison levels that I have shown you. Or for days, they don't free, as the news is accessed more through the internet. When the social media started, have you seen yourself reading less newspapers and periodicals? Yes? Now, have you also noticed that you have lesser capability to read? Yes? You cannot, if you read something, you don't stay long anymore. <laughs> because in the social media, it's so fast. You just use this. If you don't like it, you change it. Yeah? Circulation of print media is on a decline in Western countries. I hate to say that thanks to the internet, but it's in decline. I just read yesterday that one of the famous newspapers in London called, I think, Independent, is closing the newspaper in October. And mind you, it had 400,000 subscribers, and it went down to 44,000. And when you have less readership, what happens? You can no longer get advertisements. Why would they pay for advertisements for a newspaper when very few people would read? In Singapore, also, a very famous newspaper had declined. Do you remember the Reader's Digest? Whatever happened to the Reader's Digest? I'm not sure. Does it still exist? Andrew? Yeah, we haven't seen. But when we were young, we always wait for Reader's Digest. Do you remember laughter, the best medicine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they're all gone because of the electronic media, and unfortunately, print media can no longer compete. The biggest and most sweeping change in the media has been the development of social media. I will not go on to this. I'm sure there will be special topics on the social media. The pace of spread of news is increasing by the day. And in that sense, the huge world into a small and compact village. When I was a missionary in Chile, I arrived in Chile in 1982. I was 26 years old. And can you imagine the distance of Chile and the Philippines? My mother would write me, and I would receive her letter almost two months. Telephone, non-existent, because in my village, there was no telephone. Now, I always say myself, I wish I was born later, because I would have had the chance to, instead of waiting for almost two months for a letter from my mother, I would just Skype, WhatsApp, Viber. And because of this, these changing things revolutionize our way of relating to others. I was sitting in a restaurant beside the Colegio. There is a Chinese restaurant there. A group of five young men, two women and three men, they, were, they came for dinner. They were not talking. Why? <laughs> and one would even laugh by himself, and they do not know why this person is laughing, you know? So it changes our perspective, and it also changes the way we relate with print media. Now, social media gives us good and bad news. 
lately, we started using fake news. Even Pope Francis picked that up and he spoke something on fake news in one of his messages for World Communications Day. Let us listen to this. Walang sound? This year, you should have seen my revenue last year. Oh, the year before that. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Revenue. What is revenue? Well, this is just a little clip because I think that woman represents a lot of people that think that there's no point anymore for print media. Can print media really stand the digital age? While electronic media has certainly made substantial progress, polls indicate that tens of millions of readers, like your dad, your aunt, your auntie, or the superior of your house, they still prefer to receive their news from print media sources like newspaper. And here in Italy, I, you cannot even count the amount of newspapers and people buy them. They read. Why? This is a survey uh, of the U.S. readership, and you can see that still a big chunk of people read the news in print exclusive. 48 Percent, forty-eight percent. The thing is, why, why this faithfulness? Why do people would continue reading or preferring to have their information to read something to the print media? Why do people continue to read magazines and newspapers? I have some points here, and let me know if you agree or disagree. <laughs> Definitely, a print media has superior formatting. Articles look different than a web page. I mean, it's so difficult to compare, and there's nothing if I read the newspaper here, and this is screen, and I would read it in a newspaper, normal, printed newspaper. So they say, eh, we want to be faithful to print media. It's superior formatting. Second, some people are accustomed to turning the pages of a physical newspaper. Read like that. You know, you open it. You go to the last page. What is your movement with your tablet? This way, that way, and sometimes you're even disturbed. So suddenly something pops up, you know. Or even, even before starting to read, do you agree with this? Okay. Or, you know, they have all these questions. <laughs> Browsing a web page now that I'm saying can be a frustration connection. What happens if your Wi-Fi is so slow? You are waiting, and what do you? What is that favorite thing that you see? 
round, 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 round before it comes out, right? Loading, loading. Freedom from distraction. Freedom from distraction. You can go any place. You can, can you go outside with your tablet? There's no Wi-Fi. But you can bring a printed material. You can bring your book. Print media has no power to lead you to marketing campaigns. Yes, there are advertisements in newspapers, but you can skip them. But what happens with advertisements as you are browsing a web page? You cannot do anything. It just comes out suddenly. Suddenly you're reading something and something comes out of the screen and you don't know what to do. Okay? Privacy protection. Do you agree with this? Okay, what's... Can we put this? Can you give us your location? You know, there are so many things, so many things being asked as you enter into the electronic media. While in the newspaper, just share 75 cents, maybe, and then you have your newspaper. You are never bothered. Or you have your own book. More comprehensive information, good journalists in newspapers. Big newspapers, newspapers have name protect their good journalists because that's the way they can sell their papers. So mind you, if a newspaper wants to stay afloat, they keep their good journalists. And you are assured, a newspaper like New York Times, Washington Times, or any of the other big new newspapers in your country, they have the good journalists. But in social media or in any news that you don't know the source, somebody just comes out with something, and it's even what? Fake news or exaggerated news. Okay, how much do you buy a newspaper? Huh? How much is your newspaper? Sister, how much is your newspaper in your country? One dollar? Okay, one dollar. How much is a tablet? Huh? <laughs> Maybe 300? What happens if coffee spilled on your tablet? Huh? You need to have another 300 dollars to buy a tablet to be able to read if you only prefer electronic media. There is more engagement as you read your own book. Can you imagine the difference of meditating or reflecting on the Word of God, looking at your tablet, or having a Bible with you. It's different. You're more engaged. You want to feel. You touch it. You can open the pages. There is this personal engagement and personal contact. I have this bad practice. I remember I will, I will maybe uh, there is a there used to be. I'm not sure now in Chicago. Close to Northbrook, this barn book. And I would just go in there. And I would look, you know, on the books. And I have this practice because I love it. I normally open the book. I flip the pages and I like to smell. I like to smell. And I was always doing that. And one day, I was doing and smelling you know, opening, and there was this elder lady who passed by, and he saw me doing this, <laughs> and he looked at me, and she rolled her eyes like that, maybe saying, she's a little bit crazy. <laughs> Books are to be read, not to be smelled. <laughs> so, there is more engagement in print media. 
and permanency. If I have 12 issues of National Geographic as compared to what I have, 12 subscription in an uh, electronic version, there's such a big difference. I would have the beautiful photos. I can touch them. I can flip the pages. I can keep them. I can find them easier. And how about news? I remember one of our conferences said, you know, you have to stop there in all those notes. We don't even know how many are reading that. We just, you know, we just put the news online. And I told him, if somebody comes and asks you, I would like to have the obituary of this certain person, I would be able to find that we've just showed it online. So when you talk of print media, you can put them together, you can have them physically with you. I'm sure in the archives here, and like what we do in the General Aid, we have copies of books and newsletters that dates back decades and decades ago. So that's one advantage of a print media is the permanency. Now, as I said, it's not a matter of competing. In fact, in fact, this, the electronic media had given the print media an important vehicle. They use the electronic media. So in newspapers, we now have the electronic version. Books, we have the electronic version. We can talk about e-books, and we can have your books as they are printed. So that's what we call adaptive strategy. The invention of the internet and its increasing use had made it easier to the print media to reach a larger readership than before. You know what newspapers do? They would put a feeler. They would put some news there. And if you want to read further, they would say, you need to subscribe to be able to get the full story. Only the print media has a readership. The audience of electronic media is sometimes compared with it, but the audience is more volatile. Because you keep on changing. You don't, you don't in, in, a, in electronic media, if you go to the internet, you don't only rely on one source. That's why you know, our fingers are the most exercised part of our body. Because we move like that, like that, you know. We keep on finding sources. We do not stay in one channel. But in print media, this is what I have. I'm reading the New York Times, and I stay with the New York Times. The question is, the print media in our religious congregations in passing, we have the editorial Verbo Divino in Spain. It's a big editorial. They print books mostly for Spanish-speaking uh, audience. And they are very famous for their Bibles. I just got a message today that from January to September, Editorial Verbo Divino sold 800 thousand Bibles. Is print media dead? No. Why would people still buy printed versions? And we have all the reasons for that. The Logos publications in the Philippines, they also have their books. One of our new general counselor, Raymond Festin, just got a special award. He was a judge, the best theological Category Book Award with his book on philosophy, The Black Nazarene and Philosophy. Editorial Guadalupe, Argentina. We have sisters here from Argentina. Maybe you are aware 
of the Editorial Guadalupe, the soccer press in India. These are only of the few things, and perhaps you are aware of other areas wherein we are involved in the print media. Now, our print media is in the service of the church and in the service of our mission. It also is a vehicle to promote our charism. In our provinces, regions, and missions, what is the most common form of information? Newsletters, right? Circulars? Somebody told me in some of the districts, the most popular form of information among themselves is texting. They just text whatever they want. Or there is some news that a provincial would like that the conferers would know, then he will just text that information. So, as you have mentioned, we have circulars, we have newsletters. So, when one wants to start a newsletter, and before even launching your newsletter, there is a list of questions that will help you begin thinking about how you will create your newsletter. First, why are you developing a newsletter? Means is there a need? Is there a common need? It's not my need, but is there a common need of the members of my province for a newsletter? And if there is a need, who are those who are going to receive this newsletter? Is it only the members of the province? Do we include our lay partners? Do we include our benefactors? We need to define the audience of a newsletter. What is your newsletter content? What are we going to put in the newsletter? Do we have to have sections or it will be an open newsletter wherein it depends on the kind of news that are available? So that is what we are going to put in the newsletter. Ah, this is very important. Are there other newsletters from other religious congregations or even in other provinces that that is very important because normally religious congregations you can speak of charism you can speak of ministries so maybe whatever they have at this moment can give you some ideas after you have defined your audience what is the type of content that you are going to put in your newsletter, or it can even give you ideas for your content by referring to already existing newsletters from other provinces and regions. How are you going to make it visually interesting? So I think you will have a talk with Andrew because I think he will be giving a talk about graphics and maybe some ideas on how to make a publication interesting or capture interest of the readers. How will your readers benefit? So if I give a newsletter, I have to make sure that they benefit from reading that newsletter. Otherwise, they will not read it anymore when they see Arnoldo's nota erased, delete. I'm not interested. So you have to make it clear that there is a clear objective and that objective is that your readers will get something out of the things they read in that newsletter. How are you going to create your newsletter? This is not a one-man show. You cannot force yourself to design if you do not have any capability. So you have to look around. Are there any members in my community that are good in layouting? So I can inspire that member. I can encourage her so that she can join my team in doing this newsletter. How often do you send out your newsletter? This is the greatest sickness that I see in our congregation. 
we start big. The first issue, my gosh, nicely laid out, beautiful photos, lots of things that can read, but the problem is they cannot keep up because they had started so big. Make it simple. Start slowly. It is better to capture your audience when they see something simple and as time goes by, they see it getting better and better and better than comparing to a situation when you start big and the next issue start getting less and less and less. How are you going to improve? Are you measuring up to the goals you set in the beginning? Is there a team involved in this? So these very questions will now come alive by sharing to you the experience I have with our publications because in some way, these questions are more or less answered with the experience that we have gone through with our newsletter called Arnoldo's Nota. So Arnoldo's Nota he started not actually 63 years ago, but 70 years ago this year. The maiden issue was released on July 18, 1948, and this was the first issue. The name was not Arnoldus Noda, it was Arnoldus Societas Verbi Divine Inter Se Fili. And at that time, as I have said, the goal was defined. At first, after the seventh general chapter, the general council wanted to create an information center. First, an information center. Like some kind of a news agency for the members of the whole society, wherein they would reliably and currently inform conferers to this news, to this, to this information center, and editors of different magazines, things that are happening in the society. But the idea was modified. Instead of having an information center, they wanted to start simple. They didn't want to start something big and great. So the general council at the time said, no, 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 no. We only want a family paper, something simple that we can send to the members of our congregation. So, the first came out in 1948, but then it evolved even the name of the newsletter from Intercephaly to SVD Nota to Arnoldo's SVD Nota to Arnoldo's Nota from a 60 page biannual, can you imagine every six months before, to a 20 to 30 page paper. And this is, comes out every month and sometimes every two months, it depends on the issue. So as I was saying, let's see the evolution of the Arnoldus Nora. Now tell me whether as the years goes by, the quality of Arnoldus Nota has gone down or has gone up, just by looking at these images. This is Arnoldus Nota in the 1960s. Arnoldus Nota in the 1970s. Comparing to the first one, up or down? Down. Arnoldus Nota in the 1980s. Arnoldus Nota in the 1990s. 80s pala. 80s. Arnoldus Nota in 2000. Arnoldus Nota in 
So you can see that there is an improvement. So the Arnoldus Nora is basically supported in the handbook for superiors. Appear 10 times a year in English, German, and Spanish editions. And for some time, we also had the Bahasa version, but it only lasted for three years. What was the problem? All those who were translating the Arnoldus Nota into Bahasa, they all suffered a nervous breakdown. <laughs> it was difficult to translate, and finally it was difficult to find people to translate. Can you imagine every month, 25 pages, and those who were translating were also doing other jobs. So, <laughs> so this is a sample. Uh, it's all the same. The green color is the English, the red is the Spanish, and the blue is the German version of the Arnoldus Nora. Since 2002, adaptive strategy, we used to print Arnoldus Nota. Since 2002, Arnoldus Nota went online in electronic format. As an editor, what is my advantage having online? What can I do if it was only print and now it's online? What advantage I have if I have a mistake and they say, hey, Instead of brother, you put father. <laughs> so what will I do? I change it and put another one. And this is really true what happened. Obituaries. We started putting photos of people who died so that they can record, oh, this is so-and-so. I know him. They can see the face. What happens? I receive a call from Germany. Change immediately. The photo you put on one person who died is alive. <laughs> so, if this would have been print media, I could not do anything. So, I have the advantage of changing by having an electronic format. Uh, they told me that he's still alive until today. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the Arnoldus Nota, as it evolved, we also have different sections. We have a word from the leadership team. The Arnoldus Nota involves the whole society, wherein conferers would send their news. We have the news by zones. But the word from the leadership team is written by the leadership team. And they take this seriously. Since the time of Father Pernia, who is a good writer, he used to write every word leadership team. During the time of Heinz Kuluki, he started asking the members of the leadership team, and they discuss, they plan what types of articles they put for every issue of the Arnold Sunta. So we are talking here of participation. Another type of participation of the members of the leadership team is the general visitations. When they come back from their general visitations, they do a write-up so that their impressions, their thoughts about what is happening in one province can be relayed to the rest of the congregation. And because of that, we can take out best practices that are happening in the different provinces. The Arnoldus Nota has evolved also having thoughts and reflections wherein different members can write their thoughts and reflections. We also take a special events wherein we do a series of reflection. The year of consecrated life, there was a series of reflections by conferers coming from the different zones. The year of consecrated life also and our departed and obituaries. I had a chance to meet some of the guys that were doing their, their uh, 
renewal course in NEMI, and one of them came to me and he thanked me personally. And you know, I really enjoy, it's 12 o'clock, I really enjoy reading the Arnoldo's Nota. I thought he would make a joke and say, my favorite is the appointments and transfers, no? Because that's the first thing they go to see what's happening, so they look at the last page's appointment and transfers. And unexpectedly, he told me, obituaries. I read all of them because every life and work of a conqueror inspires me. Because in the obituaries, you put what has been the work, even the kind of experiences and the sufferings, even how they started as a young boy, like they lived during the World War II, their parents were simple, all sorts of information. He says, that's the best thing, and even to the point that it leads me to pray so that I will be like them. So, Father, new Superior General, I had a meeting with them yesterday, and Budi said, the Arnoldus Nota is not simply a newsletter of information. It is a newsletter of inspiration. A newsletter of inspiration that we inspire others in their, through the journeys they have gone through. So, you all know that without the articles coming from different conferers, then it would be impossible. What is my system? I look at the newsletters available, I go to the online, I go to the Facebook, and I always find something. And if it's not a complete news, I write the provincial and I said, can you tell me more about what happened on this particular event that you have posted in the Facebook or in blog news? Basic writing technique, we'll do this fast. I have only about 10 minutes. So the five W's, who, what, where, and when, why, and how, organize a story. Write the main part of your story in the inverted pyramid style. What does that mean, the inverted pyramid style? That means the more important thing comes up and the less important thing is down so that it's easy to cut if it is quite a long article. Add the lead to your story. This is only true if you have a longer article. Make the lead so that the first thing they see, they are invited. Oh, I like this. You know, I like this. It tells the first sentence that you write should capture the audience and he will roll her eyes line by line to finish the article. Is staying timely and make a bigger impression on the readers. Like for example, the conferers are happy because a day after the inauguration, they received the Arnoldus Nota and there is a news about the inauguration of the Superior General. So that is what we call a timely news, a day after. Understand the active versus passive voice. The pizza was eaten by the boys as opposed to the boys ate pizza. Of course, the boys ate pizza sounds better because you can identify the subject. There is movement. Detach yourself as a writer by using third person in most of your articles. I remember getting a beautiful, beautiful story. Three let three pages of his ministry in somewhere in Africa, prison ministry. I think it's in Zambia. But he wrote the article all in the first person. I, I, I did. It's okay, he was telling. But I changed it to third person and I put his name and I sent it back to him. And he said, oh my God. It's such a difference. I like this better because it's not concentrated on the eye. We use the third person and the third person 
has more weight. Cut the boring parts, keep it simple. I got a news. We had an Ash Wednesday, the first mass we had 250, the second mass 350 attend, and the, the fourth mass 800. So I wrote there were several masses and a lot of people attended the Ash Wednesday mass. <laughs> he read that, I think he was not happy. So he wrote me back, Father, I mentioned in my letter first, second, third mass. Why didn't you put the amount of those who attended first mass, so and so, second mass? No, keep it simple. People are not interested in numbers. Sometimes they put lots of names. I got an obituary, okay? The obituary finally drifted in telling about the story of a nurse that accompanied this priest who died. So I said, no. I'm sorry, dear nurse, you are not part of this obituary. I have to cut you off. <laughs> Keep it simple. Write all the time to practice. That's only the way you can gain skills. At the end, lessons learned in publishing, publishing and editing a newsletter, involve others, and get their interest. It has made a lot of difference in what I'm doing. You might be surprised. I've been doing this newsletter for 10 years, and I thought after the general chapter, they would give me a note. Father Sunny, thank you so much. It's your time to go. So I was approached and say, we need you more for another six years. <laughs> so. Time efficient. Always deliver your newsletter on time because they will look forward. They will look forward. The first day of the month, they know the newsletter is coming. So they either go to the website or they wait for what is sent through the email. Do not be generous with articles. Better be honest. I cannot put those three Ash Wednesday Masses, just to make this guy happy. It's boring. It's not necessary. I cannot continue putting the life of that nurse to compete with the obituary and the life of this priest who died. I have to cut that off. I cannot be generous for the sake of the readers. Roof reading is a must. I always, if I write longer articles, I don't give it only for proofreading. I give it for editing to someone. And I have a conferer in the States who edits my own articles. And sometimes you would say, oh, Sunny, this, I think this is Filipino English. So we better change this, no? So it can be seen in another perspective. But proofreading, after you have done your finished product, gave it to someone who can proofread because there is always something that you miss. Unfortunately, the one who proofread did not know personally the priest who died. So that photo that was wrongly placed, he was not able to help me with that. And after 10 years working in the Arnoldus Nota and having been taken away in something that I love most, doing ministry in the different missions, I have learned to love what I do because I believe what I do is also an important thing for our conferers to get information and to get inspiration. Thank you. So. Thank you very much. Sunny, you can drink water yes. first. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, we are opening the floor for some questions or uh, any insight. Or, okay. To answer your question, uh, the Reader's Digest still exists. Yes. It is online and they sell uh, the articles also. Okay. So if you purchase a subscription, you can get it in the ebook form as well. Uh, so <laughs> ebook and printed Reader's Digest. 
you would choose what? The printed one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe they could not sell that printed version anymore, huh? Yeah. But you know, from a from a graphics perspective, thank you for the presentation because I learned uh some things about print um print design that I didn't know before, so thank you. Yeah. I'm, can you hear me? I'm Jose uh, Ingrid. Uh, I'm, it was really something good for me when you asked. Uh, newsletter. Is this your need or need of people that you want? So I'm now I'm thinking maybe I do not need to <laughs> 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 because I mean I'm I'm in Russia with uh, only 14 sister. Do I need this one to you know to to do another work? Maybe not. Uh, I mean this is the good point to reflect on something before you start it. Uh, so thank you for that yeah. one. Okay. Thank you, Father. A very good presentation. That we could learn so much from you. When you are talking about the comparison between the electronic media and the print media, I think you could include the health aspect of it also. Yes, uh, yes. Which matters a lot in mm -hmm. today's world. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just like to comment something on, on Sister Rani. This is an example of establishing connection and communication just because I don't know her personally, but there was a common thing that we have shared, and I know she is my sister from the same congregation. Because both of us were affected with the passing away of a confer, a Filipino confer who died in Cuba. And Sister Rani, whom I didn't even know personally, was relating to me her heart aches of losing this priest. After that exchange, yeah. I'm Lily. Um, I have uh, some difficulty in editing of our newsletter. Um, until now, since we we have begin in 1966 actually, but uh, until now, I saw that we have no one common style of writing at least in my province. Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, our newsletter is in Dutch, and then, but everybody has their own style of writing, you know? Uh, what I want actually, uh, one common language of one common style of writing. So if I read, uh, for example, the telegraph of uh, New York style, of time of the guardian, so I know. Oh, this is the 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 language of the the style of the guardian. So, until now we don't have it, and what we have now, um, one sisters, edit uh, for a proofreading, yeah, for proofreading, but she has also no idea how how to, how to make it clear. I mean the style of our newsletter. So maybe you can, uh, yeah, give your uh, Is experience. it an open newsletter where you just put articles or are they divided into sections or just 
any, any news that comes, then you just put it and lay it out in the newsletter? Not only news, but also reflection and... Okay, yeah. so it's, it's a combination. Yeah, it's combination and, uh, s um, and the other difficulty also, uh, if we, s just like you said, uh, just put out the uh, unnecessary uh, sentence. If, if we edit this one, some sisters angry <laughs> so why do you not put why don't you stop something like that so yeah there is a difference between editing and proofreading when you proofread there is very little that you can do you just have to proofread those little mistakes but when you edit you can cut you can transfer you can put what was in the third paragraph if you think this is better for the first paragraph so you can move around but the problem can only be solved by a competent editor. And he has to stay that way, and they have to respect that. That's why I mentioned one of the things that we need in newsletter is that we should not be so generous, that we just publish things as they come. They have to follow the pattern, the system. Like, uh, I, cannot, I cannot put an article all in the first person. I cannot put an article with quotations that are so long because that can become very boring. Like long articles need lead sentences. The first two sentences should be very strong and very captivating that it gets your audience to continue reading. And the other thing, long articles can be sub subdivided by putting key topics then it becomes easier to read. So actually there are a lot, there are a lot of things, but it's a matter of practice and it's a matter of letting the members of the congregation that they have to rely their article on an editor and to respect the work of an editor. Karina, English. Uh, I have feeling I know that now it's not a space for it. That when I write an article, sometimes I don't know the rules how to write it. I'm not thinking about the right what I can use, but like to what is the important what to put on the first place and what is not so important. Yeah. So it's like I I think that it would be use useful to have more space, like to to check something on the internet and to say this is not a good article because da, 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 da. And this is all good also be because this is on the first place or they didn't use when, what, what father said. Or to try to, to write some message and somebody can tell us oh, this is not good because of. Yes, that's why I mentioned one of the things that we can gain skills is practice Practice, keep on writing, keep on writing, yeah? And of course, there are a lot of resources that you can even go online to give you ideas. Unfortunately, I didn't have so much time to explain some of the basic writing techniques that I have selected, yeah? To see here from India. Okay, a wonderful presentation. The print media, yeah. which is very old yet, class quarter relevance, and we do have sure. Yeah. Okay, I would like to make two observations. Uh, one thing is the uh, print media, the revenue is a great matter of concern, especially when it comes to our publications. Unlike the mainstream media, it can have the revenue through the ads. Whereas we have uh, our internal publications, which is just newsletter or things yeah. like that, which is of small quantity, smaller, uh, just for the inner circular, yeah. uh, does not require so much of revenue. Whereas something like uh, the Sasat Prakashan and all, they have got the word among us, such a something solid magazine. Or something if you really want to give to the world something, I mean the, to the community society something, in terms of reflection or uh, 
a magazine of a good quality it requires a lot of revenue for yes, the printing yes. and all and we cannot uh, go for the advertisement yeah so therefore that's one uh, setback for us in print media such mm -hmm. okay another observation i would like to make is that you know we also steal the intelligent property the uh, copy paste is so much even in our uh, 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 publications also we see i think that we need to discourage more and more especially when we deal with uh, something has to be circulated in the in public if you are uh, uh, editing the if you are the editors of a school magazine or uh, maybe parish bulletin or anything where we are in uh, um, in charges we should let the people to come up with their originals than of going for stealing the somebody else's mm -hmm. that can be but with the given the courtesy or we need to take the idea then develop your our own uh, that is also one thing of the print media i feel very good very good observation sister and uh, you the, the example that you have given that some uh, publications that we have especially for mission animation we need some revenues to be able to publish them but i think uh, some provinces are willing to shelve uh, some money for this because this is also the way to attract benefactors and also to attract vocations there are two important factors also for uh, for our mainstream staying of our society I am Pushpa, English. Um, the presentation was really good. I thought in my mind only the, those who did the journalist studies, uh, media and communication can write the article or publish the newsletter. I am in the line of health. So the basic writing te techniques really enlightened me because very hardly I write the articles. So it gave me the tips how to write it and um, I was happy about it. Thank I you. wish I had more time, sister, but we didn't have so much time, yeah. En Espanol. Gabriela en Espanol. Para mí... El micrófono, no funciona. Gracias por la presentación, muy iluminadora y de alguna manera muy motivadora para mí. Sin embargo, me surgen mmm, dudas, o más bien si hay algunos tips para poder animar a nuestras hermanas a escribir. Es muy difícil eh, animarlas, eh, escriban su experiencia, alguna reflexión, porque se les dificulta y poner alguna fecha para entregar los artículos no 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 llegan eh, muchas veces ponen el punto no sé el español pero hay otra propuesta que lo hagan en el idioma para después traducirlo y aún así no escriben algunos tips algunas pautas para motivar a escribir esa experiencia rica de misión, de pastoral, de vocación, que puede ayudar a compartir dentro de nuestra propia región. Uh, también estoy en el mismo problema. Estoy buscando pautas, maneras para inspirar más a los cohermanos a participar o escribir. Pero yo estoy usando los consejeros generales. Cuando hagan sus visitas, siempre les digo, por favor, digan que contribuyan algo de su trabajo. Y otra cosa, a veces cuando están conversando con un hermano y tiene un trabajo muy interesante, lo van a decir, mira, tu trabajo es muy interesante y es muy importante que la congregación sepa lo que estás haciendo. Te voy a poner en contacto con el editor de Arnoldo's Nota. Entonces, 
me dan el nombre de esta persona, yo le escribo y yo lo voy a decir así con palabras muy bonitas, que el consejero está muy contento con su trabajo y me dice que estás haciendo muy bien y queremos que tu trabajo tiene que compartir con la comunidad y dio muy buenos resultados. Es una manera que hacemos o a veces usamos el coordinador general de comunicaciones cuando él va a hacer las reuniones con los coordinadores de comunicación que haga siempre el recordatorio que uno de los trabajos de ellos, de las competencias que tienen, es contribuir noticias para el newsletter de la congregación. Y también lo que dijiste es cierto, si te van a decir, yo no puedo escribir en español, puedes escribir en inglés, puedes escribir en fulaco, yo voy a buscar manera para que traduzcan lo que has escrito. Entonces ya no tienen razón. Mister. Portugués. Ah, portugués. Oh. Ya voy a tratar de entender. Sí, sí. Eu sou Maria da Graça, do Timor-Leste. Assim, sua apresentação está me inspirando muito sobre como se esforçar mais para haver cultura de escrever e ler. E atual, isso me inspira e também está me desafiando, porque no Timor temos quatro línguas. Isso também dificulta para... As pessoas têm mais espírito de escrever mais. E atualmente nós temos... Hoje eu concordo com um, é, printing, também é, mídia online. Uhum. Atualmente nós temos... Um, é, porque antes nós, nós temos... É, Magazine, eh, não magazine, notas eh, de região para as, irmã, as irmãs. Mas depois, muitas pessoas não leem. Então, nós cambiamos, mudamos isso para eh, fazer livrinho de oração. Eh, ganhamos assim imprimato do bispo e depois isso para o público. Estamos produzindo 20, 20 mil tal já para escolas, para o povo em geral. Já sete anos nós produzimos livrinhos de orações. Isso nós vemos que tem mais é, públicos que interessam por isso. E este ano o bispo pediu para que isso coloque no mídia online, para que as pessoas que têm mais acesso à internet possam também... É, yeah, yeah. Com isso, é, assim, para mim... Essa dificuldade de continuar com o printing e também para a é, internet online. Porque estamos assim, tentando de poder é, se esforçar mais para poder é, publicar as coisas que nós estamos fazendo como congregação naquele país. que voy a trabajar en Chile por todos los años que voy a hacer. Ahí es mi 
I feel so bad that, you see, during the chapter, uh, Nancy and I were translating. Now, she's translating for me. <laughs> I am Rosalind from Togo, Togo Benin region. Father, I would like uh, really to thank you very much. Uh, for the input that you have given us. Yeah. It's opened my mind to see many things. It was really clear. Thank you very much. I have one uh, question. Like in my region, we don't have uh, any printing, none of these things, only the newsletter from my region and we have. And for some time now, she told me to write some newsletter, try to bring out something for the region. And I was wondering, <laughs> I have never done anything about communication, so it was a little bit hard for me to understand it. And, and whatever comes, I try to write down in my book and put in pictures, something like that. But now I realize that there, there are criteria for writing a newsletter. Like, uh, you said uh, we should use always a third person. And is to make it attractive, bold. Mm -hmm. uh, my colleague, how to choose the name to make it attractive? That is the first thing. If it's internal, uh, how to put it? Because you just said we to move from the what is very important down, like triangle or parameter. Yeah. How, how to do it? Because I am novice. No peace in that, how to make it, that is my worries, and how to come <laughs> So that uh, when I go back, she has asked me so that I can put something and then slowly, slowly, you said that it is through practice, yes. you can do it. Where to start, how can start and to make it attractive, that is my question. Do you have your newsletter already, sister? Not yet, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But from the regional we have. What? What was the most one thing that is so important that I mentioned? When you are starting something, you look for a source. So you go to other provinces and see what they are doing. What do they do? Do they have a section on message of the superior? Do we have a section on JPIC work? What is that pervading ministry in your 